Yeah, that's oh, my BFF, oh, Beanie. Okay. Betsy. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm so glad she turned up. Did you plug in? Did you get in? Can you hear me, Betsy? Betsy, can you hear me? Betsy? All right. We're good. Am I plugged? Am I on? Is this thing on? This thing on? Wow! Just do it. Yeah. All right. All right. Is this thing on? The other one in the tutu scream, and you just talk normal. I'm sorry. What was that, Betsy? No, I want you to listen right over there on the side. The TV is This is like library hour. She's doing the audio book classic. All right, so my name's Val Ball. It rhymes with Val Ball because I'm a little outside the box. And uh, as part of my art, I decided to get wired because I was tired of that drawer of wires by my computer with the old chargers and the old audio cables. And what does that plug into? I don't even know where that is. What end is that for? So I decided to just find a home for all the lost wires. I do a radio show on Wednesday nights on KKFI, Kansas City Community Radio. There's your pals, boss. <laughs> Michael has my pals, yeah. mostly Michael. He helps me make costumes, and we decided to uh, read 1984 for you. There, if, if you listen to my show, there are three books I would like in our book club, Fahrenheit 451, Brave New World, and 1984, because I think it's really amazing how... Also check out Illusions, Tales of the Reluctant Messiah. Tales, okay, you can have that one onto the list. So I just wanted to read you an excerpt out of 1984 that I found while I was getting wired. <laughs> All right. The fabulous statistics continued to pour out of the telescreen. As compared with last year, there was more food, more clothes, more houses, more furniture, more cooking pots, more fuel, more ships, more helicopters, more books, more babies, more of everything except disease, crime, and insanity. Year by year and minute by minute, everybody and everything was whizzing rapidly upwards. Had it always been like this? Had food always tasted like this? He looked around the canteen, a low, shingling, crowded room, its walls grimy from the contact of innumerable, innumerable bodies. Battered metal tables and chairs placed so close together that you sat with elbows touching, bent spoons, dented trays, coarse white mugs, all surfaces greasy, grime in every crack, and a sourish composite smell of bad gin and bad coffee, a metallic stew and dirty clothes, always in your stomach and in your skin there was a sort of protest, a feeling that you had been cheated of something that you had a right to. It was true that he had no memories of anything greatly different. In any time that he could accurately remember, there had never been quite enough to eat. One had never had socks or underclothes that were not full of holes. Furniture had always been battered and rickety. Rooms underheated, two trains crowded, houses falling to pieces, bread dark colored, tea a rarity, coffee filthy tasting, cigarettes insufficient, nothing cheap and plentiful except synthetic gin. And though, of course, it grew worse as one's body aged, was it not a sign that this was not the natural order of things? If one's heart sickened to the discomfort and dirt and scarcity, the interminable winters, the stickiness of one's socks, the lifts that never worked, the cold water, the gritty soap, the cigarettes that came to pieces, the food with its strange, evil taste, why should one feel it to be intolerable unless one had some kind of ancestral memory that things had once been different. Yeah. Yeah. We're all too wired. 